O come, O come, Emmanuel, come, Lord Jesus. So we light the first candle today on our Advent wreath. Let us pray. Lord of light and longing, we light this candle to remember the grandparents of our faith, people like Abraham and Sarah, who waited for a child to call their own and a place to call their home. We give you thanks for their faithful witness to your call and pray for all who are waiting this year to see their families, to hug their loved ones, and for a safe place to live. We pray for all those caught in areas of conflict, violence and oppression, or those who are struggling to provide shelter, food and warmth for their children. Lord of light and longing, you waited with your people of the faith from our past. We ask you now to wait with us during this time of waiting and Advent. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We dare to light a light of hope, despite the darkness of our world, in the face of cruelty and suffering, of oppression and inequality, we dare to hope. In a world that sometimes seems hopeless, we dare to hope. With the patriarchs of old, we dare to hope. We light a candle in the darkness, we dare to hope. O come, O come, Emmanuel, come, Lord Jesus. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to bring peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word to make us strong. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And in this Advent season, we use those words of the Kiri. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen now to our Old Testament reading read to us by Mary Wright this morning. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you whose work, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. 
for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are your people. This is the word of God. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter beginning at the 24th verse. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, puts his slaves in charge, each with work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes. And what I say to you, I say to you all, keep awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, we begin our journey of a new year on Advent Sunday. And that word Advent means coming. We celebrate the coming of Jesus as a baby in Bethlehem when we get to Christmas Day. But in these days and in these weeks of Advent, we look forward to, to the second coming and return of Jesus Christ. As that gospel has just reminded us, we are to keep awake. Jesus could return at any time on any day. We need to be ready. So I want to think a bit this morning about how we can be ready. And if somebody important was coming to your house, I wonder what you would do to get your house clean and ready for that visit. I guess at the moment we're getting ready for Christmas in our houses, and so there's probably quite a lot of cleaning and tidying going on before the Christmas tree goes up. So I guess some of the things, I brought a few things with me that we might use to get ready. Perhaps your house is a bit like ours. It's got lots of cobwebs. So we need our feather duster to get rid of some of those cobwebs. And I guess, too, the windows might need a little bit of a window clean. Clothes might need washing to ensure we've got nice, clean and ironed clothes ready for that person coming, yes, I bought my iron. Yes, we need some ironed clothes too. We might too have to mop our floors to ensure 
that those areas are clean too. So there's lots of things that we can do to get our houses ready for those people coming. The problem though with Jesus is we don't know when he's going to come. That doesn't mean to say your houses need to be 100% sparkling clean all of the time, but we need to be ready for his coming. So we prepare our houses. What else do we need to prepare? And to help us think about that, I hope that you're sitting at home with either a piece of plasticine, a piece of Play-Doh. Perhaps some of you are lucky enough to have a piece of clay. And Mary, who's just read to us, as many of you know, is a potter. And she's lent me some clay so we can think about that this morning. Okay, so I want us this morning to be, I'll give you a piece as well actually, the people in church can join in. I've got some wipes so they can clean themselves when we've finished. I want you to think you're going to be, this morning, one minute potters. I'm not going to make Ian do it because he's going to have to time me. So, I would like you to take whatever you've got to mould and I want you to make, we're going to have one minute and I want you to make a flower. Okay, so in one minute you're going to make a flower. I'm going to do it as well. I'm not very arty and Ian's going to tell us when our one minute is up. Yep, go, sorry. Make it however you want. I'm just thinking... The good thing about plasticine and clay, of course, is that we can actually... Um, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to make a flower, but hey-ho. I don't know what quite what it looks like, but I don't think it's a particularly flower shape. But let's have a few petals. Oh, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Pardon? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get Mary's. She's made me. Let's have a look. Look, the potter herself. Here's the flower. See it on the screen? Here's the flower from the potter. How are you getting on, Janet? Yeah, Janet. I guess Janet's is pretty good as well. We are. Here's Janet. Okay. Okay, right. So that's your flower. Next, I want you to make, this one's a bit harder, a horse. And then in a minute, okay? Ready, steady, here comes our minute. I'm going to try this time and make something. Some legs. <laughs> I hope you children at home and adults are actually a bit more successful all I've got at the moment is four legs, even three legs. <laughs> um, I don't really know quite what it looks like. Not, <laughs> not quite like a horse. Ten seconds. Twenty. Oh, yes, Janice is looking pretty horse-like. Oh yeah. Do you want to wave it in front of the iPad, Mary? We'll probably just. Oh, here are his Marys. Look at this one. This is pretty good. <laughs> Stop. Right, Janet. Janet, she's got three legs, I think. Four. Four. Okay, there's Janet's. Okay. Right. Right, lastly, I want you to make a vase. This should be pretty easy for Mary because she makes them all the time. Go. I think I can even manage that. A little tiny. How are we getting on with our vases? Ten, how many? Twenty? Twenty. Oh, 
Oh yes, Janet's is taking shape. Might want those as well. Stop. Right, Janet, wave it in front of the camera. There we are. This is Janet, I guess. Great. Mary. <laughs> Excellent. Right. You two, there's some wipes there if you want to wipe your hands while I'm finishing my talk. If any of you want to fiddle and faddle when we finish the service this morning, get some pictures, then do please get them sent in. You can email them across and we can put some up to show you. So... At the moment, that clay is quite easy to work with, and that's been sitting in my house, wrapped up in three plastic bags, all tightly air-sealed. If I left this piece of clay out for any length of time, and even now, it's beginning to dry out, and it wouldn't be at all easy for us to mould. And that was very much like that reading that Mary read to us. That reading from the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah was pretty cross in that reading with the people. He said, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Isaiah was cross with the people because they had very hard hearts, a bit like the clay drying out and unable to be changed and unable to be moulded. But God can work through all those hardnesses of hearts that we have. He can enable people to turn away from their ways and to turn back to God because that is the sort of God we have and the sort of God we worship. Like the potter makes the clay into pots, God can mould us and shape us to become those people he wants us to be. We don't know, as I've said just now, when Jesus will return, but we need to make sure that our hearts are ready, ready to be open to receiving. Just like our houses need to be ready for visitors, our hearts need to be ready to welcome Jesus. So you might like to make in a moment your clay into a heart to remind us that we need to have our hearts ready and open to welcome Jesus. And we can use this time of Advent to prepare our hearts, to take some time out to be with Jesus each day, to read the Bible, to pray, to study God's word. And this morning, we haven't been able to gather in church and to physically have you present to light our Advent wreath. So you families, you will have had delivered this week a do-it-yourself Advent wreath to make at home. And I'd encourage you to get the cross coloured, the shape cut out, put it on a plate and get some tea lights. And each Sunday in Advent, even if you come to church in the morning, to light that Advent wreath to remind us that we are preparing our hearts to welcome Jesus this Christmas. So let's be those people who are ready when Jesus does return to welcome him into our hearts and lives. Amen. So we now together declare our faith in Jesus Christ. We say together in faith, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. We turn now to our prayers, so let us pray together. Our 
as we begin a new year in the life of our church, let us pray together to the God of our making. Holy God, just as we are, we come to you and ask for your kingdom to come in us and in this place. Increase our faith and our love for you so that we may become lights in the darkness that we are called to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time of Advent, we continue to pray for the West Seven Oaks team. We pray for each of the churches in that team as they too prepare during this Advent season to welcome you at Christmas. We pray too that you would give us hearts that are open to receive you again this Christmas. And we pray that in all the midst of our own Christmas preparations, we may never forget the reasons what we are celebrating. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray now for our world, a world where there is greed, distrust, and people can continue to fight with one another. We pray that you would break down the barriers between individuals and countries and enable them to live more effectively together in harmony. And we pray too at this time for all who govern the many countries of our world. Praying especially for our own government and those who hold offices of responsibility and the many decisions that they must take which affect each one of us and our own land. We pray for great wisdom and discernment that they, what they do may be done for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for all families and all who are part of our own church community. We pray for those who care for relatives in difficult circumstances those who look after children and those who teach children. We pray that you will give to all of them care, love and wisdom at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we bring to you in love those who are weary with ongoing pain and weakness, those who are frail with age and all who are vulnerable. And we continue to pray this day for Gwen, Phil and Tom, for Adrian, B, Tony and Ted, together with others who are known to us in need of any kind. We ask that you pour out your strength into their lives and bring them the touch of your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for all who have come to the end of their earthly life and for those whose lives feel empty without them. Give comfort to the bereaved and everlasting peace to all who rest in your arms of love. As we pray for all who have died in recent days, we remember too the anniversary of those who have died in recent years, remembering especially this week, Maureen Howe, Wing Bing, and Sheila Angel. Bring them with us to a place in your everlasting kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we now commit this week and all we will do, the conversations we will have, the people we will meet, the things we will do, the people we will be with. We pray for each of those some known and some will take us by surprise. But we ask that whatever we are doing and whoever we are with, we might be aware of your presence with us to strengthen and uphold us. So merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And so we share the peace with those we're gathered with, either in our homes or the few of us in church this morning. Peace be with you. As this bread was scattered and then gathered and made one, so may your church be gathered into your kingdom. Glory to you, O God, forever. Wisdom has built her a house. She has mixed her wine she has set at her table. Glory to you, O God, forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. You send your spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And now we give you thanks because you sent him to redeem us from sin and death and to make us inheritors of everlasting life. That when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may be with joy behold his appearing, and in confidence may stand before him. And so we, we join the angels to celebrate and sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. Jesus Christ will come again. Father, as you bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, Send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words that Jesus, our Saviour, taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God's gift for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Body of Christ. Blood of Christ. O oh Lord, our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we wait the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just a few notices to give out this morning. Next Sunday, we will be back in church. Our Christmas tree is arriving at the end of the week and will be up and ready, decorated. And obviously, we'll continue to light our Advent candles. There'll be a message to those of you that have got younger children as to whether junior church can meet next week. We need to look at the regulations. The Church of England haven't actually produced the update yet, but Marie will be in touch to let you know whether there will be a junior church session live in the church hall next Sunday. Otherwise, you're welcome to come <coughs> into church and we can provide tables for you to use during the service should you need them. If you go onto the church website, you can now book your slots for your Christmas services. All four Christmas services, lessons and carols, Chris Dingle, Midnight and the main service on Christmas Day will need you to book a ticket to come into church. That's obviously, I'm not anticipating it being a problem, but we just need to make sure that we have space for people that want to come. If you happen to get on there and there's no tickets left, then please email me. We can start a waiting list, but you do please need to do that. So do go on to the website and do that. Obviously, all services now can be back in church. But we obviously will need to be extremely careful being in tier three that we come into church and we leave and don't congregate outside church for a natter. The reason we can be in church in tier three is that we come in and then disperse at the end of the service, which is unfortunate. But that has to be the case for the next two weeks until perhaps things might change. Just a reminder that our Advent study group starts this week on Tuesday. If you'd like to join us, then join us via the link on the weekly letter. Before our blessing, we're going to listen to another Advent hymn on Jordan's Banks, The Baptist's Cry. <laughs> 